I'm Michael Franhol from Wizard Consulting Group. I put the picture on the slide so in case somebody else presents you know that it's me. Um, I formed my company in about 20 years ago. I've uh, been in TechNet for 11 years. And I've been working with computers a long time before. There were personal computers and I started working on mainframes. Um, and I have a, a lot of clients in all different types of industries. And um, if I were to tell you anything that I am special, I have specialty is EDI and XML. Um, they're, they're particular for large retail industries and uh, I kind of I got pulled into it in a project several years back and it kind of stuck. Um, I've also studied a little bit of Oracle and I was involved in boot camp last time. So, um, let me ask everyone a question about data normalization. Um, how many people don't have any idea what, when I say data normalization, what it means? Do you all know what it means? Or no one. Or, or no one. <laughs> how many people don't think they know what data normalization means? You have no idea what I'm talking about. It's not normal. Okay. Well, that's good. I think what you're going to find is that, um, this is something that we all do when we're developing. We may not necessarily think of it as data normalization, but I think as, de as developers, um, it's a natural part of, of how we work. So I'm going to be talking a little about data normalization and data modeling and uh, how they're related. And I also want to talk about why you should care about these things um, and how it's involved in the application development process. And in addition, I'm going to talk about all the normal forms. I'm going to give some uh, examples and demos. And I'm going to talk about how FileMaker differs from traditional SQL databases, which is where a lot of this theory originated. And if we can't break the rules, why would we want to? And how might we do it? Um, <coughs> Because I don't want any lawyers coming after me, I'm going to put up on the screen all the different resource material that I used to compile this presentation. Although I will tell you that modern database management is the uh, information where I got most of this from. Um, I don't want there to be any confusion. I didn't come up with most of this. Most of this was straight out of the textbook. And of course, some of it was off of the internet. Now, now the lawyers are happy, so let's go on. You know, why why should you care about data normalization? Well, um, data normalization is all about making your data structure clean and keeping it efficient. You don't want data duplicated. You want to know that if you if you delete something, that that's all you're deleting. You don't want to lose information. You don't want to have to enter things twice. That's the whole point of doing this. Um, and when you're talking about data modeling, which is what Dave did a little bit of his last presentation and what um, John's going to talk about later, we're collecting all the information about what it is that we want to track. Um, we're weeding out information we don't need, and we're also applying some business rules when we're, when we're doing it. Remember, data modeling is all about taking what happens in the real world and boiling it down to what we get to when, when we're building a system. That's data modeling. Just like you're building a model airplane, it's a, it's a smaller scale model of what happens in the real world. So here's some, here's some technical definitions of data normalization. Um, now there's a difference between logical design and physical design. Physical design is you actually sitting down and building your tables. You add the fields, the calculations, whatever you do. Um, and then logical design is what comes before that. You're coming up with, with a conceptual picture of what it is you want to do, the different types of data that you want to track, entities, how they're related to each other, and what processes might link them together. Um, this, this, this is how I describe it. Basically, 
as I said, you want you don't want data repeated, and you don't want to lose something when you add, delete, or change something else in your system. Uh, okay. Some of this is redundant, so. So it's not normalized? It's not normalized. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm going to show you one. This is, this is, this is um, you know, oftentimes when you talk to us, talk to a customer, or you talk to your end users, you actually use what you, what you discover in your data model to communicate with them. You may not show them the graph. But the data model helps you identify the different pieces of the puzzle and how they all fit together. Now, this, this is just one example. Um, there are a variety of different ways that you can model data using a chart. I just want to point out that this, this is not the only way to do it. I also want to point out something that's very interesting. This, this type of ER model not only talks about what the entities are, which you see in, in rectangles, but it also talk about, talks about the actions that link them together. For example, a customer submits an order, an order requests a product, and so on. So it not only talks about what you're tracking, but how, how those pieces come together. This what do the, the diamonds represent on that chart? The diamonds represent actions. A customer submits an order. An order requests. Now, not all of these are necessarily explicit types of actions. I mean, obviously, if a customer places an order, yeah. But when an order requests a product, I mean, most orders have one or more light items. And so you're, you're going and you're pulling from a list of products and saying, I want one of those or three of those. Yes? The double um, <clears throat> OK. This is somewhat standard um, ERD. Double lines means one of these. The little crow ski means one to many. We're going to go in, into data modeling. We'll go into that real thoroughly. Yeah. I'm just going to be real brief. Circle means optional. Um, line with the crow's feet means one or many. This also, Dave also mentioned the term cardinality. That's what that is. And John's going to talk about that more when we talk about data modeling. So, so that you understand all the terms, and in data, in data normalization, there are a lot of them. Um, <coughs> tables are called relations. A row is what we call a record in a table. Columns are a single field. And an entity, that's, that's a thing. It could also be an, an event, an object. Isn't the relation actually an interaction between two tables as opposed to an actual table? It's really interesting, but no, in, in normalization and in, in the theory, the relation is the table. Okay. That's, that's how it's referred to. Um, an instance, sometimes you'll talk about an, an instance of an entity. And usually what that means is one record. Like, you know, an instance of a contact is, you know, there are mirrors and day and night. It's, it's, it's one row in a table. It talks about one person, one thing, one event. And when you take the rules of normalization, you apply them to, to, to data, then you get a normal form. Now, um, one of the most important elements of talking about normalization is the, is the concept of a functional dependency. And it's, it's really a lot simpler than it sounds. Functional dependency means you have one element of data that's related to another, such that if you know one, you automatically know the other. Um, a candidate key is something that's discussed more in theory, um, but basically it's another name for a primary key. It means that when you're at a table and you look at that candidate key, you know that that relates to one and only one value, one record in that table, no other. Um, and a determinant, which is used in some of the other theory, means like, you know, if you know somebody's social security number, you know who they are. That's a determinant. And lastly, these, these terms